Well, this is the uh, microcode um, state machine. It is definitely a work in progress. I haven't got everything I believe that needs to be done yet, but I thought I'd give you a glimpse into what I'm thinking. So on this side, we have an instruction register. So we can do an instruction write and load this with our instruction value. The instruction value is decoded by uh, an EEPROM. And um, for every instruction code, there are 16 um, microcodes. So those are generated by a, a, a counter, 4-bit counter. And uh, the values in the EEPROM are the states of the machine. So it's an 8-bit. So a lot of people have been putting multiple EEPROMs. And I thought, well, that seems to be a bit wasteful. Let me take four bits and decode those and take another four bits and decode those. We'll call one set the from uh, devices and one the two devices. Uh, you're not going to have two froms and you're not going to have two twos. So you can have single decoding. So it's an efficient way of taking uh, four bits and, and breaking them up into 16 individual lines. So the from devices right now, there'll probably be more later, but the from devices are something like a RAM read, IO read, RAM address read, IO address read, the program counter read, flags read, instruction read, blah, 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 blah. So there's all these things that could be reads. So these are the things that you put on the bus and then some other device will read them from the bus. So these are the from devices. The two devices are basically the same set, only they're twos. So writing to the RAM, writing to the program counter, flags. Um, there's a couple that are maybe a bit odd. And one is a, a program counter increment, um, a halt uh, for other uh, status of the machine. So the um, 74541s that we've been using for the tri-state buffers, when you put things onto the bus, those are a low low true enabled devices so if the pin is low then it puts things on the bus so this device works the same way if the uh, uh, 4-bit address is the correct value then one of these pins will go low and so one of these things will be enabled um, there's an additional uh, um, logic where uh, in addition to um, the correct address you have to enable the chip so this is an additional enabling so these all these pins will float high unless uh, uh, this goes low so you can gate this thing all right on um, the two devices the same way they're they're gated so we can have a pulse for the from so we can put things on to the bus and we can take things off of the bus and uh, this is my present thinking on the timing of these two uh, signals. You have a from pulse. So when it goes low, you've put things onto the bus. And then you have another uh, signal that has to go low in between. So while things are valid, you need to have a low going pulse. So this is the two pulse. The way that I'm going to generate these is um, two non-overlapping clocks a phase zero clock and a phase one clock. The phase zero clock will be pulsing along and the phase one clock will be shifted in phase and it will be going and they are non-overlapping clocks. So there'll be some uh, dead space between uh, these. So there'll never be a state where both of these are valid. Uh, you'll have a pulse, a dead space, a pulse, a dead space, a pulse, a dead space. In order to get the uh, from pulse, we're going to divide the phase zero by two or put this into a, a flip-flop. So on every rising edge, it will change state. So it will fall, rise, fall, rise. That will generate our uh, from pulse. And then the two pulse, we need to have a valid uh, low going pulse only during the low state, not during the high state. So the phase one clock also needs to be um, uh, changed a bit to give this two pulse. 
So the two pulse is basically the phase uh, zero divided by two and the phase one um, added together, you know, a not and, uh, not not and. Um, so it's uh, basically an OR gate. So um, that's what I'm thinking there. Uh, there is a, a reset for this counter. I'm not sure what to do quite with that yet. But I think it'll come in handy. Um, let's see what else do I have going on. Oh, so the uh, two devices. Uh, some of those two devices are not low true devices; they're high true devices. So I need a positive pulse instead of a negative pulse. So this is a this looks a bit funny the way it's drawn. Um, these are just uh, uh, inverters. Uh, I just kind of smashed them together here, to, so I take a plus room. So this is a, a, a 7404, just six inverters. And so some of these lines need to be inverted. So IO right, uh, RAM right. So I've inverted those. Um, so we have to add more or delete more, but uh, I have it in there at least for now. All right, so that's my present thinking on the state machine. Um, it will require a clock uh, generation board. I, I haven't worked out the clock generations yet, but um, to do to do this stuff uh, to do this stuff down here, but um, that will be next after I get this kind of troubleshooted. Let's take a look at the board. Uh, here's the board. It's getting big, um, and um, we'll start down here. This is the data bus. Um, this is our 8-bit bus. So. Uh, the um, microcode state machine is going to be an address, I mean, a, a instruction. Uh, it will take instructions and generate the right signals. So it needs to have an instruction. What it means to need uh, instructions are in RAM. So there needs to be a RAM read and then a write to this device. So um, the RAM will read and then this device's latch will grab that data off of the bus. And so now the value of RAM goes in here. That RAM is the instruction code. This is the little counter here. The instruction goes into the um, EEPROM. Uh, the EEPROM, uh, four bits go to this decoder, four bits go to this decoder, and then they end up being all these signals at the top. Uh, these are all of the um, two devices, and these are all of the from devices. And this little chip here is the inverter, so some of the signals are high true. So that's about what it's looking like. It's a fairly large board in the grand scheme of things, but um, why are these not working? Oh, this is something you need to watch out for when you're designing boards with ground planes. So ground comes in on this pin uh, down at the bottom. You can see it connected here. So you need to, like, using your head, go through your board and see if it's going to electrically work. So you need to look at the ground path. So uh, there are sometimes cutouts in the ground plane. So if something needs to be grounded over here, it, it, there's no direct path to it. So so the ground would come up here. Um, it would go through these pins that's fine so this is a good ground here um, it will come up to this pin that's a good ground there um, and oh, these need to be connected i don't know why those aren't there we go and uh, so they come up to come up to here and they kind of stop. This chip kind of gets in the way. So we can go this direction. We can say, how far does that ground go up here? Well, it kind of comes up here. And then it kind of comes around, but it never quite gets to this chip. So I've inserted a little uh, jumper here. Um, you can see that it's just kind of floating in space. Um, and it's just a via and a trace and a via. And the reason I have it in there is uh, to connect uh, this ground with this ground. And you can see it's not, interestingly enough. Ah. So if we connect the 
needs to ground. There we go. All right. So all I had to do is rename that signal trace to, to ground. So now you can see that this is going to pick up that ground plane. This is going to pick up that ground plane. And this is going to come and pick up this pin here. So now that this pin is happy. The ground will then continue along over here. And it should get to the rest of the board, I think. There may be some, may be some trouble in here. Uh, might be hard to get to ground here. No, there's a good there's a good path here. We can uh, turn off the bottom trace to only look at red. That would help a little bit. So the red, uh, red would come across here, would go through here, come through here, would go through this chip, would get over to here, and then we're kind of blocked again. So again, I have a stitch here, um, and again, it's not connected because I haven't re haven't named it ground. So let's click on this, call it ground. There we go. Now we're connected. So now we have a stitch. So I've had to put in two stitches in this um, uh, in this design. Uh, one stitch here and one stitch here. Um, otherwise, this board probably wouldn't work. Um, so you need to watch out for things like that. Anyway, like I said, this is a work in progress. I'm still trying to figure out if this is going to be sufficient. If I haven't uh, missed anything, I'll need to maybe do some documentation on how this is all going to work and uh, kind of work it out on paper before I submit this particular board. This one's getting quite complicated. Um, one of the things uh, when you're laying out these boards, a trick that I do uh, to make sure you don't have any shorts or see things that aren't kind of going crazy is to uh, turn off all the traces and then turn on one trace one like the top layer pads via is an unrouted and that's all i put in and uh this is actually then the copper this is what the top copper looks like and it's just a little bit easier it's a little bit simpler uh, you can see if there's anything funny going on um it it's a little uh, I don't know it's a trick that I do to make sure everything looks good. So right right there here we've we found an error already. So we're gonna fix that. And that's why I have unrouted uh, enabled on the, on the layers. It's that little that little rat's nest line is an unrouted line. Yeah, so this looks good. And then you can go back and you can say, okay, I've done the reds. Now let's go do the blues. And it's the same thing. A little simpler this time because there's no ground plane, but you can kind of look around. And um, sometimes things look goofy when you, especially the back layer. The back layer kind of gets ignored because you're mostly kind of, your brain is thinking about the top layer and you're using the ground layer once in a while. But like, these look okay. They may, Maybe you want to pretty these up, but ah, they're functional. They're probably fine. Yeah, good. So the fat traces are uh, VCC. Uh, so that's how VCC gets into the board. It comes off of this pin here, comes up, gets split. And then ground is off of this pin, but it's it's the ground plane on the top layer. So turn everybody back on. There we go. Yeah, it's looking good.